you for that wonderful welcome. This is Senior Night. Senior Night. We are celebrating our seniors. Uh, I need one of those microphones, the, the MCs. Where, where'd one of them go? There we go. Thank you, Aubrey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, uh, folks, I'd like for you to meet some of our college friends, and uh, I'd like for you to know them. And so some of them are in the room tonight. We got, uh, I see Jeremy Large back there. Jeremy is one of our, uh, he's our college, is it associate? College associate is your title. Uh, we've got Dr. Lucas High is back here. He's not really a doctor, uh, and he is interning with our college ministry this summer. And uh, we've got uh, Zach Allen is somewhere, I think. Is that, Zach's right here. Uh, Zach Allen is our college pastor. And Zach, why don't you come on down, if you would. Uh, those of you who are seniors, you're going to be transitioning after tonight into our college ministry. In fact, you've already done some hanging out with them. And so, Zach, why don't you just give us a few words. And uh, for our full youth ministry, what, no matter what grade you're in, I'd love for you to know Zach in advance, because one day you'll all be transitioning at some point into our college ministry. Zach, so glad that you're here with us tonight. And hopefully, unlike my journey in college, it'll take you less than eight and a half years to get your undergrad. So, but kind of in, in the general, like you guys, if you've, how many of you have been in collective maybe since you were like in middle school? Where's your hand real quick? So there, there's a point in time where if you spend seven years here, like some of even of our graduates tonight, um, when you get to college, there, there's a lots of lots of opportunities that will, will put in front of you shiny things, shiny things of the world that give you the opportunity to kind of be distracted from the things of, of what Asa and Clint and Zach and your leaders have done in helping pass on the deposit of the gospel. And one of the things that I would just share with you, whether you're going into sixth grade or you're going into 12th grade this upcoming year, is to allow your focus to be fixed on the cross of Jesus and to not let the shiny things, and some of those things are good things, getting, getting the tests that you have to do to get your AP credit, your IB scores, any of that kind of stuff, relationships, those are good things, football, good things. But shiny things can distract you from Jesus, and that's the most important thing, any part in time of your life, whether you're a sixth grader or you're a 60-year-old. So, anyways, for those that are graduating, we'll see you here tonight. We look forward to having you around here for a while. But we appreciate the ministry that you guys are doing and passing them to us. Hey, let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate that. Well, we always want to take a couple of moments in a service like this to recognize and celebrate well our seniors. So I'm going to invite all of our graduates to join me at the stage. And there went 400 bucks. Uh, let's have all of our graduates come on down. Come on down. Give it up for them, everybody. You can, yeah, just form a, a little line right there. Uh, I'm just going to pass the microphone down. And who, uh oh. Uh, here's what we're going to do I want you guys to just. Tell us your name, tell us what school you just graduated from, where you're going next, and what you're going to major in if you know. Tell us just, you know, some semblance of a plan. And, uh, and if you want to, you don't have to, but if you want to, share with us a favorite moment in your time in Movement Youth. We're going to start right here with you, Michael Latham. My name is Michael. Um, I graduated from Buholtz. What was the other thing? Where are you going to go next? So, I may be going into the military to serve. Um, I would like to be a helicopter pilot, so that's what I'll be training for. And then, my favorite moment here. I have no clue. <laughs> All of them were good. My name is Andreas. Uh, I graduated from FLVS, and yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll be attending Santa Fe, and the major that I want to do is sports management, and then, uh, favorite moment, uh, I don't really have a favorite moment because I never came. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> 
My name is Brandon Garcia. Um, I've been attending Westside since D now, and um, D now and uh, what's it called summer camp here at Westside were honestly my favorite moments. On top of uh, all the little things like meeting everyone here, which was a very positive influence in my life. But um, I graduated from St. Francis Catholic Academy, and and um, I'm going to be attending Santa Fe in the fall, and I plan to study biology and then later transfer to UF to study vet med. Okay. My name is Sophia Sykes, and I graduated from Beulah High School. Woo! I'm going to Florida Gulf Coast University to study health sciences to hopefully become a PA. And then my favorite memory here was definitely when I got baptized last September. Yeah. Can I do? Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Melissa. I graduated from Newberry. I'm going to UF. And, <laughs> and uh, my favorite memory here was definitely Julio singing Veggie Tales to us. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Video. Mm. Hey, my name's Aubrey Cook. And um, oh my gosh, I literally just listened to every one of you and I forgot what the questions were. <laughs> I graduated from Bale High School, Yeehaw. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to UF in the spring, yeah. and my favorite memory, which I also forgot that question too, yeah, so that's good, um, probably one of the times when we went to the really, really mountainous place, we've been to a few mountains at summer camp, but the really mountainous one, where there was a snake in our cabin, mm. that one, so if you were there, you remember it. And Zach coming in and putting some girl's towel over it and her being like, that's my only towel. And Clint, and was that you too? Uh, listen, my mind was a blur. I was trying to go to sleep and all I heard was yelling and screaming, waking up someone saying, that's my towel. And then so a snake getting beaten on the floor. So, yes, that's my favorite memory. <laughs> my name's Josh. I graduated from Buholtz High School. Go Bobcats. I'll be going to UF next fall. Woo! And my favorite moment from Collective is yet to come because I can't wait to see each and every one of you come in. Oh, quiet, Mariah. Come in and replace us and do so much better than we could ever imagine. Aww. Love you guys. Aww. <laughs> um, I'm Kaylee. <laughs> and I graduated from the Rock School, and I will be going to Southeastern University. Um, I'll be majoring in kinesiology and then hopefully applying to PT school somewhere else. Um, so my favorite memory is probably this most recent youth camp, because like all the youth camps, I've been since sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, up to now, and my favorite was truly this past one, because it grew me so much more than I was expecting, so. My name is Abby. I graduated from u Holtz. <laughs> I'm going to Mississippi State in the fall and majoring in marketing. And my favorite memory is small groups with Mama June. Aww. Hey, celebrate this senior <laughs> class if you would. Celebrate this. Um, Hey, we, a new tradition started a year or two ago, so you guys just stay in place for a minute. Uh, we're going to take some questions for our seniors. If you've got, uh, you need a word of advice, or you need a, a, something encouraging, or you, you want to know what to do to survive senior year, or really any grade in school, because they've now passed all of them, we want to take a question. So who has a question for our senior class? Just slip up your hand. We've got Mr. Than back here in the back. Let me give you this microphone. Give them uh, an appropriate question. What year of high school was the hardest and most difficult for you guys? Great question. Who, who would like to answer? Well, oh, I gotta run with this. Here we go, I saw Brandon's hand first. Freshman year for me, first of all. Um, also sophomore year, and really the rest of high school, but. <laughs> <laughs> but freshman year was definitely the most difficult because for me personally, I went into a school knowing exactly nobody. So that was my high school experience. 
Someone else want to take that one? Um, I think junior year because that's it really sets your GPA. So like I don't know if you guys know this, but when you you apply to your colleges in senior year, but the grades you start getting in senior year don't count for your GPA that you're applying for college. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to keep your grades up in junior year, and it's when you should take your best classes. That's good. How about another one right over here, right up front? Did God help you on this journey? Let's go to Josh. Yes, he did. Is, is there... Uh, you want specific? No. Okay. Is, is there any on the, anyone on the panel who would say, no, he did not help you? Okay, fantastic. We've answered that one. Kate has a question. Your own sister, Josh. We're going to go right over here. Um, I just have a question for, like, uh -oh. If there's one piece of advice for each of the grades, like, what would you give for, like, freshman, sophomore, senior, and third junior? Ooh. Let's see. Uh, make your answer 10 to 15 seconds or less. Uh, one person per grade. Who's I'll, got, I'll who's got ninth grade? I'll ninth grade. Remember you're a freshman. Re remember that you used to be the big fish at middle school, but you are no longer. Who's next? Are you sophomore? Tenth? No. You're another ninth? Stay focused. That, okay, yes. Answer. Who's sophomore? Uh, really just relax your sophomore year because, like, freshman you're all scared, and then, like, junior's really hard, so sophomore's, like, a nice place to kind of chill out and just, like, enjoy the memories you have. That's good. Uh, junior year, who's got that? Aubrey. Kind of like what he said. If you're a junior, you're not a senior yet. So, um... <laughs> Don't start freaking out about college, which, I mean, you can if you want Stay to, but lane. it really doesn't do anything for you. Um, don't think you're senior debt. Don't park in senior parking, and don't go at senior lunch. I don't know if that's a thing with you guys, but we always had juniors going at our senior lunch, so don't do that. That's good. You got senior um, year. For senior year, do not sweat the small stuff. I spent too much time, like, this mm. first semester, like, okay, I have to get all my books in a row, like, and graduate successfully, but it's... You need to enjoy your memories. Like, I work in the preschool at my school, and I'm, like, walking through the halls, like, <laughs> I'm leaving. And so, like, just remember that this is the time to have fun. That's good. How about another question? We got another one from the, oh, right here in the front. And then we'll come to you next. How much studying did you have to go through? Let's, I'm going to go down. You've answered two in a row. But I I think it depends on the class. Depends on what you're good at and what you're not good at. Science, science. science sorry, oh, it's easy for me. I thought you so said. I did not spend a lot of time. I thought you said. Science. I thought you said silence. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, right back here. We got to go back here. How much homework do you get in high school? Cause the last school year, I got about seven pounds of homework. Tell us how much homework in pounds, please. In pounds. In pounds, exactly? Yes. Mm, 156 pounds, exactly. Hundred. A lot, and it's great. So you're going to have to step it up. You've got to go from 7 to 156. Let's go right over here, and then we'll come to you, Julio. What was the most amount of APs you took, like, in a year? Great question. Who wants to answer that one? How many AP classes in a year did you take? <laughs> my senior year, I took six. Um, oh. My junior oh. year, I did three. Yes. And I passed five out of six, so that's pretty good. Ah. <laughs> Anybody else want to answer that one? I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive. Hey, everybody, I want you to know Julio Sarmiento has been our uh, senior son uh, life group. I'm never going to get it right. Senior life group leader this year. Also, uh, the Wildmans teach that senior class, but you guys actually didn't have anyone graduate this year. Oh, Haley, okay, you did have people graduate this year. They're just not here tonight. Okay, uh, let's go to Julio. You're about half of the seniors, and you guys were a tight group, and it was awesome watching you guys together and the friends. And, and the people out here, they've got their friends, and they've gone to school with them and for seven, eight years, the whole time they're here. Half of you guys are gone. I mean, they're off to Penn State and mm -hmm. off to Texas and off to Michigan, you know, in, at USF, Jay. And how, do you guys plan on staying together and, and the bonds and the people here, what recommendations do you have to keep them tight so after this is over, you guys will continue to 
keep in touch or you guys like don't want to see each other after tonight? That's good. We'll let Josh answer. Well, I'll be here for a long time. Uh, can, I, can I tell him about next year? Uh, no. No, never mind. Moving on. Are we? Uh, well, you know, how about the, the, let's make the question, how do you plan to stay in touch? Who would like to answer that? Somebody want to take that? Thank you. Um, I plan on calling people. I've been thinking about this a lot. Like, Imagine the novelty. Calling. I know. Calling. <laughs> not texting. People, not people don't like calling, but I do. I like actually like talking glory. to people. So I, pl I just plan on calling people whenever I think about them. I love it. Call people. <laughs> Give it up, folks. Give it up. Hey, everybody, this is... As Julio said, just part of our senior class, we've got folks that have already gone on to uh, other schools out of state. They've gone to Air Force. They've uh, just all kinds of things that have gone on. So uh, we're not able to say goodbye to all of our senior class all at once ever. But why don't you celebrate those that are up here on the stage before you. Thank you, guys. We'll welcome you back to your seats. This is, um, this is one of those nights that it always kind of takes on a nostalgic and a sad tone. And I want to uh, read a word of scripture to you that is for and to our seniors, but it really applies to everybody in the room. So our message tonight, Philippians chapter 1. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1. Uh, seniors, you know that these years have flown by. Life starts fast, and it just keeps getting faster. And those of you who are not seniors, you're sitting in the room, and you're watching this happen, listen, it may seem like this is years away, like you are never going to finish. Some of you feel like you are never going to get out of Fort Clark Middle School. I promise you, you're going to blink your eye, and you're here. You're going to be on the front of this stage getting ready to go to college, and you're going to wonder, where did all the time go? Life starts fast, and it only gets faster. But this is the privilege that you and I have as followers of Jesus Christ, that we have a master of our time, a master of our fate, a master of our days, a God that we get to serve. And in Philippians chapter 1, we're looking at a man named Paul, who knew what it meant to follow that Jesus through all the days of his life and all the twists and turns and how his story went in one direction and then he thought he would go in another and it actually ended up being a third direction you never thought of. And, and students, this is what you're going to experience in life. And as Paul writes this letter to the church at Philippi, he begins with this really elegant reminder about what it's like for him when he prays. And we can learn a couple of things from this, but seniors, you know, we, at our senior luncheon, I read this text to you. This is what comes to my mind whenever I think of the special place that you guys hold in my heart. Philippians chapter 1, beginning in verse 3, it says this, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all of my prayers for you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I want to pause and I want to look at a couple of things that we can learn from, from this text. Paul's expression of love and of, of where he holds this group of people within his heart. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you. Number one, seniors, as you're going, underclassmen, as you're going about your days in school and as you're being part of this ministry, remember, remember, seniors especially as you're leaving, everything in your world's about to change. You're going to be Seeing friends go to different schools, you're going to, maybe you're going to a school out of town and you're about to leave the group. 
things are going to change. Remember the people that you have walked with thus far in life. Now, I, I will not be dishonest with you and say that every single person that you knew in high school, you're going to be best friends with until the end of the age. It, there are very few people that you're going to have as a lifelong friend from your high school days. Underclassmen, knowing that, do not get so wound up with people that you think you cannot do life without. The Lord very well will change the people that are around you. That's not always true in every phase of life, by the way. Some of those friends you meet in college, they stick with you. Some of those friends you meet in your career, they'll stick with you. And every now and then, you got one or two high school friends that are going to stick with you to the end. I remember when my grandfather was dying of cancer. We had a visit one day in his final days from his friend, Buford. How's that for a name? Buford. Buford and my grandfather had been friends since they were eight years old. And I remember Buford came over and he knocked on the door and he went and he pulled up a chair in the bedroom next to where my grandfather was laying in the bed dying. And I walked by and the door was just cracked open that wide and it was just wide enough for me to look in and see Buford praying for my grandfather, weeping tears. And I thought to myself, how blessed, how blessed someone can be to have a friend that truly would be lifelong. Remember the people that you've done life with. He says, in all my prayers for you, I always pray with joy. Seniors, if you haven't figured it out by now, underclassmen, if you haven't figured it out by now, we need prayer. If you want your life to go well, pray. If you need wisdom for the direction that you're going in, pray. I do not understand how so many Christians believe that they can live a fulfilling life without prayer. I'm not talking about the kind of prayer that says, God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food. Amen. Or the simple prayer that's like, God, I've got this test. I didn't study. Give me an A. Amen. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean agonizing in prayer. I mean laying before God all that you are and all your dreams and all your plans and all your wants and all your desires and saying, God, I'm here not only to speak to you but to hear from you. You got to pray. He says, I remember you and I pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Know this, seniors, your life is a partnership with others for the gospel. Sometimes that partnership is linking arms with someone who already knows Jesus and going and bringing that message to others. Sometimes that partnership is with someone who needs to know Jesus and you're partnering with them so that you might deliver that message. Joining with them on their journey. Life's a partnership. And he says, I'm confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. The work has only just begun. Graduation and seniors and going to, you know, leaving high school, it all feels like a conclusion. It's not. It is a gigantic launching pad for the next phase of your life. And God will bring a work of completion to all that you are. Each year I kind of dust out the... Um, The, the words from an idiot, words of wisdom that I keep by, and, and these are not things that um, are, are wise in any sense of the word. These are things that I have learned from making terrible mistakes. Uh, I pass them on to you so that maybe you can avoid some of the mistakes and some of the pain that I've gone through. But know this, uh, this is kind of advice is a form of nostalgia. Um, it's taking what was 
broken and busted and thrown away, dusting it out of the trash can and recycling it for more than it's really worth. So this is the musings of me, an idiot, passed on to you in any way that might be helpful to you. Seniors know this. Life, by definition, is not fair. The sooner you realize this, the sooner you'll get over it. In the meantime, never use it as an excuse. God is forgiving. God is also loving. It would benefit you to be both. People will come and people will go. There are people in your life today that you think you cannot live without, but tomorrow they will be gone. Remember, you had a life before them, and you'll have one after them. Friends easily made are easily lost. Friendship's a funny thing. You can never work too hard at it. A truly lifelong friend is hard to come by. If at the end of your life you have just one of them, you'll be a very blessed man or woman indeed. Everyone will disappoint you at some point. Family will disappoint you. Friends will disappoint you. Even I will disappoint you. Remember when it happens that you too will disappoint others, and because you will, you can be forgiving. Nothing that is easy is worth doing, and nothing worth doing is easy. Don't even try. A lazy person is probably the most pathetic thing in the whole universe. Don't become one, and certainly don't waste your time with one. Remember that life is unpredictable. As much as you plan and as frantically as you try to control it, it will always outwit you. Roll with it, then make the best of it. Life is also too fast. Remember to enjoy what you have today because far too quickly you'll wake up and wonder where 10 years went. It won't be the things that you did that you'll regret. It'll be all the things you didn't do. Go back to the places where your life changed. Visit them often. Remember the you that existed then. Tell that old you what you've learned. Be sentimental. No one else will ever be sentimental for you. Do whatever it takes to make one person's life better every day. Do it even if you need someone to make yours better that day too. Remember that people are always more important. Learn to give. You'll never know joy until you do. For the path that we've shared together, I'm truly grateful. I'm proud of you. And I believe in you. And know this. One day, you'll find yourself in a very dark place. You'll be defeated. You'll be depressed. And you won't know what to do or even what to think. And when that day comes, remember this. I believe in you. Know that I'll always be your friend. Thank you for letting me be your youth pastor. Wherever you go, I'm cheering you on. Thank you for how you've cheered me, even when you didn't know you were. Seniors, I love you. I'm grateful for you. And I'm grateful for all that you have meant to this student ministry. Underclassmen, why don't we celebrate them and all that they've done. I want to finish Paul's little note, and then I want to share one more thing with you. Paul says, I pray with joy every time I think of you. He says, it's right for me to feel this way about you since I have you in my heart. For whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. And God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus to the glory and praise of God. 
the senior class is special. You're special to me because it was seven years ago that I became youth pastor, and you guys were in sixth grade. Not all of you were here then, and I'm grateful for that because it means people have been getting saved and people have been added to us over the years. I became youth pastor unexpectedly. It was really quick. I'd never dreamed that I would be youth pastor until a few days before it happened. And there you guys were. You welcomed me. You received me. You stuck with me. I remember sometime around Christmas of that year, 2012. I was in the worship center and GCF was going on and some of you guys were in the show. And I remember thinking about how many youth pastors had come and gone in the couple of years before me and I prayed a simple prayer. I said, Lord, if you're willing, give me the grace that I would see this class graduate. And the Lord answered that prayer. God has been faithful. So it's very appropriate that this class that was in sixth grade when I became youth pastor would be the last class that I see graduate as youth pastor. About a year ago, I began praying about my future and yours, the future of our student ministry. I began asking God to lead me through prayer, through seeking Him, the conversations that were had, the circumstances that would unfold. In these last several months, the Lord has made it very clear through those circumstances, those conversations, and that seeking of him, that the time is now for me to lead you to a new leader. There's not another opportunity before me that I want to pursue. There's not anything that I fell out of love with student ministry. In fact, I'm asking the Lord to help me understand how I'm going to live without it. But the timing is right, and the Lord's been clear, and so I must obey and follow what I believe the Lord has said. So what that means is that in the next several weeks, they'll be my last as youth pastor. I'll be with you for four more weeks from now till the end of August, after which time I'll take a three-month sabbatical. Zach Jernigan will be stepping up into the role as youth pastor uh, from his current role as associate youth pastor. I have zero doubt in my mind that the Lord is in that decision. In fact, it was five years ago we brought him here for just such a moment as this, not knowing when it would ever come, but knowing that one day it would. I'm dealing with my own emotions over this, and I know that this will create things for you to deal with, for our leaders to deal with. And so over these next several weeks, we will try to be intentional uh, to move things forward, to deal with this together, and to finish my tenure as youth pastor over this ministry on a positive note and to the glory of God. From the day I became youth pastor, I knew that one day this day would come. What I did not know until today was how much of my heart all of you had.
please know how much I love you and how much I want to lead you well, even in these final weeks. If you bow your heads with me. Father, I want to pray over these seniors. I want to pray over these students, underclassmen, middle school. Father, what a blessing. What a blessing it has been to walk with them. Lord, I pray that it's been pleasing to you. Lord, thank you for all that they've taught me. For all the joy that they've brought into my life. And Lord, I pray giving thanks, especially for this senior class, for their partnership in the gospel from the very beginning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithful answer to prayer. And now, Father, I pray that you would be faithful again, that these seniors that we'll say goodbye to tonight, Lord, years from now, 10, 20, 30, 50 years from now, will look back on their life and will see the answers to prayer all along the way. Thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, I pray your protection over their lives from the harm of the enemy. Lord, we know that they'll leave and go to college with targets on their back. Lord, surround them by your Holy Spirit. Guide them always. And Lord, use every single one of their lives for your glory that thousands might come to know you as Savior. Father, in these coming weeks, I pray you'd help me. I pray you bless our students. Bless this ministry as we transition. Lord, we trust you for it. We believe it's right. We believe you've led us here. And so, Lord, we give you our yes. Go with us and go before us to the glory of your name. It's in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. You celebrate these seniors one more time.